Hello, this is Neil from MasterPainyNow.com. Right, so here's another exclusive video for you guys. Now, I know I haven't been making, uh, you know, uh, what I promised. That was, I promised to make one video a week. However, I've been trying to make up with that um, with you guys by making longer, more substantial videos, you know, full lessons, you know, an hour and a half long, you know, however, however long it ends up being. But, you know, a full lesson rather than just like a 15-minute video once a week. So that's how I've been trying to make it up for you guys. Been, I've been having, I've been finding it hard to find time to get down and just like record for you guys. So I figured, hey, once I do find that time to record, I'll just record a full long lesson for you. And this one's all about character creation. What goes into character creation? Not just creating a character face, but creating the whole persona, the entire figure, the entire body. And part of that is, you know, how does the character move? And uh, so the first thing I did is I came up with the idea of a face here. I don't know if you guys remember this tutorial that this face was created from. I don't. I don't really remember honestly what, is, what exactly that tutorial was about. But I came up with this face and I and I liked it. This kind of character face and I was like, hey, that's pretty cool. I can, I think I can work with that. She got a little bit of attitude, a little bit of weirdness, and uh, you know I, I would take that weirdness and and bring it through. So what I did is I started with a generic head. And this is how I always start out my character creation. Sometimes I'll start with a body. And sometimes I'll start my character creations out instead with the body, with a uh, with a figure, you know, kind of like just kind of see a figure, you know, whatever it's going to look like, and you know, maybe they're more like a sad kind of figure like this, and you know, hair comes down and moves. Just a quick like sketch, and you know, something like that, long kind of sleeves of big big open sleeves, skinny at the top, and, oops, maybe just a little, little perky breast, and then this shirt kind of comes down, it's a kind of side view, anyway, then maybe tights with thin legs, high heels, something like this, and you start, and I know you probably can't really see much in this little sketch, but I can, I can see a lot, because I know what my brain's thinking of, and so, actually, I make that shirt cover her hand, I could then take that and you know turn to this kind of shy, introverted character that uh, you know doesn't really like to be around people and stuff. But I, I kind of visualize it sometimes as like a silhouette or like a little quick body sketch. Sometimes I start with the head. When I start with the head, you know I, I start with a very generic head. It's like you know the same things that I teach. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom into this over and over again. You know, have the little generic eyes. Sometimes you can just do most like dark circles, and the mouth, and this turns into a person. You decide, okay, do you want to have big cheeks? Want to have a thin, thin chin? A thin neck? You know, what kind of hairstyle do you want her to have, and all that? And you know, that's how I developed this character. As I added these features on, as you can see. Decide the hair is going to be wild, and I'm going to make it even more wild when I do the final character. I have a base idea of what I want, and you know, I, I decide what kind of eyes I pop into there, what kind of nose, what kind of lips, and the type of lips and eyes and all that, and that helps develop the character. Now, the face expression can also help develop the character, but you know, maybe there's certain expressions this character just never makes, like a happy expression, let's say. So then I take that and I develop it into a body. I need to find a body to fit that character. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to take this into, I'm going to go ahead and just copy the head here. I'm going to bring it into a bigger document. Now because it's already on a, it's not this, I'm doing this on another, I'm making it US paper size on the other screen here. And I'm going to paste this in there. Now because the image is done on a white piece of paper already. I'm going to set this to multiply so that the white disappears. It's actually done in kind of grayish, but that will make all the white disappear anyway. Right, so that's the basics of the character there. At this point, there's no reason to like completely redraw it. You can. You might get some new motivation and stuff as you completely redraw it, but I think I have a good idea of what I want for the head and what I want and the changes I want to make. So at this stage here, I go back through and I go, okay, this is what I'm going to change or not change. 
And I'll probably just go ahead and use my inking brush here. And I'm not on 100% opacity for some reason. I decide I really want to go wild with the hair with this one. Maybe the light source is coming from the right. Maybe I shouldn't make it coming from the right, but whatever. Right, so I'm thinking that's how the hair is going to be. Bring my face down. And at this point, I decide, okay, you know, what kind of... Um, kind of face do I want her to have? Do I want her to have more of a rounded face to give that kind of young look? Because if I give her more of a rounded face, that's going to give her more of a young look. If I kind of go with something like this, that's going to give her kind of a more young look, but I think I'm going to go with the more older kind of teenager look here. And at this stage, you know, I keep my lines loose, so I'm going to give her a really thin neck here. So I keep my lines really loose at this stage because, you know, I don't want to spend too much time just in case I decide I don't like something. Also, I want to decide how far out I want her bangs to go. And I'm thinking, I'm only making go out to here, and I'm thinking I like more of the, you know, spikiness. Maybe not that far out, actually. Let's come, let's come back in closer. Like so. I don't know, you know, if I want the back of the hair showing at all. I don't think I do. Um, you know, this is where the highlight of the hair will be coming across, coming from the right hand side. All the rest then would pretty much be covered in with black. Maybe a little bit of lines here and there to show the streaks in the hair. I don't know if it's necessary really to come in and color all this right at this time, though. And usually, you know, if I'm going to color something, sometimes it's easier to just come in and color a bulk of it black. Go back to a smaller brush, do the detail here. Again, I'm keeping this done quick. It's a pin sketch. So even though it's done with a pin marker, you know, it's still a pin sketch, kind of like if you were just to pick up a, uh, you know, a marker and sketch on paper. Right, so I like that. Next, I gotta decide if I like the eyes the way I did them. Um, I'm almost thinking it might look cooler if I have a slight break in here. Gotta think, you know, is this a single character I'm drawing? Um, is it a comic character? These are all the things I'm considering. Does this have a slight Asian in her? Things like that. I kinda like that mean look to her. Bring out the eyebrows right there. I like doing that with eyebrows kind of come forward to a spike and then they kind of come down. And I'm going to have this just be a slight. So as I'm working on the character, I, you know, I decide you know, what kind of detail do I want to give the character. I kind of like this thick makeup goth look here. Sometimes I'd even switch to a, a size 3 ink brush to do some of that work there. Kind of want that, that thicker. I want the bottom as well thicker. Kind of like that. So now I'm giving her kind of more of a goth look. Which I'm partial to. So we can kind of see some of the, the differences that I'm making to her. And all all these little differences can really make your character. I'm giving her a cute little button nose here. Actually, some of that I might actually do a uh, 
size 3 brush here add a little bit of details okay and now for her lips I like the lips I'm gonna keep them pretty much the same I might make these bigger Maybe they leave that line kind of broken at the top of the lip there you know every little choice you make when you're designing a character all that take you know I'm gonna make the right side lit up not the left side because I'm considering the light source is coming from the right side and so I'm kind of shading her that way just doing some quick like shading here you know whether I make this bottom lip shape like this whether I make it shaped more square smaller whether I have it come out and be bigger you know all this every one of these choices helps define the character you know that right there is a different character and you know that's like more of a kind of spunk weirdness. I kind of like that actually. I'm trying to give her that spunk weirdness. That's what I want for her. That's the character I'm going for. I'm even thinking about this being even more long, kind of spunky and wiry. Just something totally off the wall that you would never expect to really see. You know, it's things, it's style choices like that my opinion that really make character because you know to make something unique make something that stands out you know like boondocks it was you know really wild choices of how to draw eyebrows and all sorts of things that really made boondocks what it was to have that spunkiness to have the difference and so if you want your you, you want your stuff to stand out that's one way to do it you know, the Simpsons took some really crazy, dramatic kind of changes and alterations. And, uh, you know, I go through that in style. So if you, you know, how you dramatize it, how you exaggerate, what you exaggerate, what you minimize, all that, you know, makes your character and it makes your style. And anyway, if, you, uh, if you're unfamiliar with what I'm talking about, look at that. Look how different she looks now. And that's all part of character design and character creation is, is making those changes and, and seeing them and see what you like and what you don't like and why you like it. Make this side all darker. Another, another great example is uh, Aeon Flux or Eon Flux, however it's pronounced on MTV. Just great style, just to totally weird and it stands out. You know, work like that stands out. Anyway, if you're if you're unfamiliar with that, you definitely want to get my heads course. It's a 20-hour course. It takes you from the most basic fundamental things like the skull and all that, and a little bit of anatomy of the face, and you know all, all the the eyes and nose and mouth, and, and how to place them together, and how to make faces, and it goes into all you know how to stylize your faces, all into cartooning them and stuff, and how 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 to not only break down any kind of style you see and imitate it from anime to comic to whatever to the Simpsons you know it, it shows how to do all that but then also it shows how to break down the style and invent your own style to come up with your own style in general and uh, that's probably one of the most interesting part of the courses in my opinion is it teaches you how to develop your own style for faces um, you can apply those same principles to figures and stuff too if you wanted to Right, so I think that's where I'm at now. So now I zoom out and I think, okay, well, what kind of character is this going to be as far as, you know, how is she going to look body-wise? At this point, I make a new layer. And I'm going to sketch in blue or pink. I usually sketch in pink. Maybe I'll sketch in blue. Maybe it would be easier for you guys to see. I get my sketching brush here. It's a size 3 brush. If you don't have my brushes, all you have to do is buy one of my courses. And my brushes come in the courses as a download. So let's see, um, think about how, you know, our collarbones somewhere in here. Collarbone, collarbones for me are like a, a really big landing mark. I don't want her head, I want her shoulders to be quite narrow. 
And so I come down. Right here, that's how wide I want to meet. Typically, make that side a little bit wider too. Damn it. Is that right? Yeah, it's about the same length as the other neck. Uh, basically, I think it needs to be a little wider on this side. Basically, the uh, the figure is about the same width of the head on each side. But I like with especially my more feminized characters is make it less than that for the width, the widest width of the figure, either the widest width of the shoulders or the wide, widest width, which is usually the hips. You can kind of you know take out some measurement here for the head and to kind of just roughly duplicate it, you know, or you can first draw the body then plug the head into that however you want to do it. So that right there is going to be about the halfway mark. And I just continue to duplicate that length. I want another four of them, so I'm going to go with the typical eight head body. If I decide I want to change it, I can. But that's what usually I fit everything into. The uh, the hips aren't going to be as wide as this widest part here. The widest part is actually the hip bone that comes out. Not uh, the hip bone. This is the hip bone, the pelvic. You kind of do that a triangle or something if you want, and that kind of works. That's not the widest part of the of the figure. The widest part of the figure is actually where the legs come out. That's where the femur bone comes out, and then the femur bone comes back in and down. You just kind of like make a slight angle like that for the bottom of the legs. The knees are going to be somewhere in here. At this stage here, I I don't really focus so much on like a, a pose or anything. I'm trying to develop a figure, so I'm going to keep it very basic. You know, just a very basic front pose. That's usually how I first develop my character. And then from there, I decide different things. I'm thinking about anatomy. I'm just kind of doing some basic skeletal structure anatomy here. I go through this in my anatomy course. I teach the uh, a better way. Uh, my, my Master of the Human Figure course is good. Don't get me wrong. It's definitely worth having. It comes in my seven course bundle. But um, my anatomy course is so much better. And it's a full course unto itself. In the beginning of the course, I actually talk about, because I originally was going to have the foundations that are taught in the Master of the Human Figure course be the foundations that you want to use for for the course, so I'm like, nah, I might as well make an all-inclusive course, and then partway through recording the course, I decide to include everything, so it's a, an entire course unto itself. There's no pre westcott knowledge needed. You know, you can be the most beginner of beginners and take my anatomy course. It takes you from the beginning to the ending, and it's 65 hours, and you will be able to draw the figure like you never could before. Now, one thing I notice here is I, I go, wait a minute, I kind of made like the halfway point the halfway point doesn't seem to work totally as the halfway point. So what I do then, so I'm not going to redraw anything, I'm just going to take this halfway point here and just extend it. Since this is a basic skeletal structure, it's not that hard to do that. And go, okay, now I like that better. And I can think about style. Do I want it to be more of an anime style? Do I want it to be more of a comic style? Do I want it to kind of just be, you know, maybe my own style? Uh, kind of come up with something my own. Uh, it's up to me. You know, I want longer legs, shorter torso. All that kind of thing comes into play. I can't think I like this ratio here. Sometimes I kind of keep it generic to start out at first, just to develop a you know, kind of a figure. Because everything, every change you make is to make a difference in your character. How big the breasts are, how big the hips are, all that to make a make a change in the overall appearance and feel of the character. Do I kind of want to be more matured? I kind of want to be more spunky and like small. I can make a, you know, really more of a smaller body style, you know, more with really, really thin neck, you know, larger head, really thin arms, thin, you know, thin shoulder ratio, small breast, really thin waist. Come out here with a maybe wider hips come down and I have the legs I can come out with something more like that and that would be kind of a cute body style and it'd be more cartoony and maybe that would even you know fit more of like a 
really wide horizontal hair here more of a Disney character and that's kind of a cool idea I could go with it but I'm going to design the body here first and then maybe I'll go with that as an ending result and then maybe I'll you know pose her or something like that but this is the char this is my thought process I go through as I'm developing character notice how I can really exaggerate that in this character look how far out the hair goes in this little silhouette piece I did um, it's really more exaggerating that's probably the end result what I'm going for but I start here first to, to develop and design it and we'll go into a little bit of you know imagine where the end of the rib cage is here kind of pull out the rib cage remember the rib cage doesn't you know, it's not super wide kind of do like an oval basically you have like a triangle thing a Superman underwear down here you have the oval here for the rib cage and you kind of just bring up into that oval and you have the sternum. The sternum is not super long. And you have like that halfway point from here to here where you have the wrist and you have your elbows. And then you can start you know, developing the character on top of this and you have your shoulder blades back there and everything. But knowing all that anatomy, that's what, you know, know where the muscles attach and everything. Your breast muscles attach here, come to the arm, take halfway, about half of the collarbone, come down that's your pec, but it comes all the way down to the end of the sternum, which is about here, and partly down to the end of the uh, end of the rib cage there. And anyway, you can think about that anatomy if you want to. And the breasts kind of fit on top of that. They have, the, I imagine, like a hole first, and then I imagine that's like where they're attaching. Then I imagine where they're resting on top of the rib cage. And the breasts go way up there. But you're not going to draw all necessarily draw all that part of the breast. And I go, okay. Do I want the breast that far out? Do I want it more in, like they're more propped together? And again, all these choices you make are going to affect the overall look of your character. Again, lay lay the breast onto the rib cage. More realistic approach here. That then turns into that muscle, the pec muscle. The deltoid comes here and it goes over that, wraps around and it, connect, it connects onto the collarbone, wraps around away from view and connects back onto the, onto the scapula. Comes down to about halfway, the halfway mark of this bone from here to here, that is the humerus bone. Oops. And so I, you know, I develop more of a you know generic body at first. Sometimes it's like okay, at this I'm not I'm not really thinking too much about clothing or anything like that at this at this stage. I'm thinking about more what's the overall body style? Is she gonna have thin arms, thick arms? Is she gonna be thicker? Is she gonna be thinner? I'm really gonna bring her rib cage in here. I might even make her rib cage thinner. Come out. Love handles. Now keep in mind the love handles ta attached to the iliac crest, which kind of comes out wider on a female. So our love handles appear to be longer. Look at this belly button is usually located somewhere around, actually more around here, right around the top of where the top of the uh, pelvic, whole entire pelvic bone, if you imagine, it, as one big bone structure. The, bo the top of the legs attach to the bottom of the iliac crest and they come down to your knees and the inside of the legs attach here and come down. Now this this stage here leg has, leg has come out there to account for that bone. The bone actually touches the end of the leg there by the way. You can feel it. If you press against a skinny person you can feel the bone here and you can feel this bone here. That is the iliac crest of the hip and then the part of the femur bone. So just basic mannequin, keeping it skinny. And at this stage that's pretty much all I need to develop my character because my character is mostly, mostly clothing. But that's kind of the, the base body type I want. I don't want like super huge breasts or anything. And sometimes it's uh, you might find it easier to think about the form here and go okay so and there's a rib cage here and it comes down. And you can imagine that whole 
oval here first, you know, where you had the rib cage. You just kind of draw that shape in there first, and then have that pec muscle, you know, which comes off here, attaches underneath, comes over here, almost like you're drawing a mill. Like that, and then you go, okay, now I know the breast attach about here and here, and then you have the, however big the breast is, is, is going to fit onto the rib cage. And typically the breast is quite far away from each other like this. They don't, you know, there's a pretty big gap, especially with smaller breasts. The smaller the breast, the bigger the gap is between the breast. And then you can start coming in here and erasing a lot of this, a lot of these guidelines. Right, and that kind of gives you, you know, an idea of your figure. And so that would be, you know, a smaller breasted figure, which is what I'm going for. She's more spunky, outgoing, smaller breast. Right now at this stage here, I begin to design clothing. I begin to think, well, what kind of clothing does this character wear? I have all kinds of clothing to choose from. There's no reason for me to go all out right now and draw like a full-on body, like a naked figure, because I'm going to be just adding clothing onto it. And then the part that I don't add clothing onto, I'll go back in and I'll draw that part of the uh, part of the body, that part of the figure. I'm thinking she kind of looks like she has a little bit of age in her, and I kind of like the Japanese culture. And I kind of like how they how they dress and stuff. It's kind of interesting. Um, I kind of want her to have kind of a, a weirdness to her, so I want her whole outfit to kind of reflect that weirdness and that gothness. And, and this is a stage that can take a while. You might go through several renditions before you come out with something that you're really happy with. And so you start like with another layer. You have like the basic body there, and then start with another. That's what I like to do. Start with another layer. Maybe even start with a different color. That way you can easily see what you're drawing on top of and drawing over. You might even look at things like uh, Hiroshima type girls and stuff like that or cosplay to get ideas um, for, you know, no, don't just like directly still them, but just to get ideas of what you might want to draw. One thing I kind of like um, is like, uh, uh, sometimes I like with a neck, you know, they have something tall on the neck here. So that's always something I consider. I like this look where the shirt it comes up high here the seam you know say the seam kind of comes the seam kind of works into more of a V and then it comes over here and the other seam is here like this and then it can come out to a full length there's wrinkles in the shirt here and it has this kind of and it comes out and down with a big sleeve that covers half the arm. I kind of like that look. It's kind of cool. And so I'm thinking I might come, you know, I might use something like that. Um, I might end up giving her a different kind of, you know, this is just like thinking. There's usually always wrinkles in the, uh, and it just comes out, it just comes with studying clothing and knowing where wrinkles happen in the, in the figure. Uh, it's probably going to be part of a course or be a course unto itself eventually. That is how to... I, I do have a, a, a really cool tutorial for free on my YouTube channel all about clothing and folds and stuff, so that is definitely something to check out. I'm thinking about doing a full course on it and go like more detail into clothing. It's kind of pull the... you got to think about how it's going to stretch over the breast You know, sometimes you can do that. You can sometimes do a dip more to kind of show, you know, the breast more. Oops, it's usually always this bottom plane that's more in shadow on clothing when you have the breast there. All right, so I'm kind of digging that. Um, then I might I might make it kind of a might make the ribs thinner even. I might come out and make this. Make sure the clothing always wraps around whenever you're, whenever you're putting clothing on the figure, 
wrap it around the figure. Um, what I mean by that is, so you have the rib cage here, right? Zoom in. If I want the shirt to be here, I want I want to imagine it's wrapping all the way around the figure. You know, the figure is that kind of kind of a tubular thing, and it's going around. So when you come down, the, you want to pull that clothing down, like this. See, so now it's like boom, connects over here, and then the see. So this is a part of the rib cage coming down. That's where the clothing bunching around. Pull a couple of wrinkles. You can see that it's you know, it's going around the figure, as you can see. Depending on the perspective too, whether you're looking up at that part of the figure or looking down on that part of the figure, typically the uh, waistline is usually about the horizon line. Um, in, in most in most situations, where the camera is going to be at, you got to think about where your camera is at too. But for basic design, I imagine the crotch area right here that being where my about the horizon line and so everything below the horizon starts going downward and so if I were to put um, some type of stocking on her it's going to come down like this it's not going to go up right unless you know unless the horizon line is down here more and we're kind of looking up at the character then you would draw the stocking like that or the boot or whatever otherwise it's like this if the horizon line is at the crotch line and everything that's above the horizon line has kind of arch going up like that so the shirt here is going to have a slight arch going up. And so the reason why I'm doing doing this uh, shirt crop top is so I can show off her belly. And i got to think of, you know, why? Why am I showing off her belly? What's the point? And I'm thinking maybe because she either has a cool you know, tattoo around the belly, like a star or something like that, or maybe she has like three stars, one, two, you know, three, some kind of cool design there, or maybe she has a really cool, you know, belly button, and something hanging on it, kind of jewels, you know, something that stands out. Um, I like to have reason for why my characters and be dressed in certain clothes and if you're doing a comic book it's you really kind of draw the same clothing over and over again so you know you want the characters to be recognizable and they typically you know wear the same clothing over and over and over again it's not like you put them in different clothing every time uh, unless it's like a longer graphic novel or something then you might decide to add more clothing right so that's the top and I think I like the star design, that's kind of cool. Kind of fits her weird personality. So she's going to have a smaller star here, a bigger star here. Remember, keep it fast, keep it loose at this stage. You're not trying to go for a masterpiece here, you're just trying to come up with this character design. You don't need to spend a bunch of time on it. Later on, you know, when you're doing your final drawings, when you have decided and everything, that's when it's like, okay, then I'll come in and decide to add, take my time more and, you know, add final lines and all that kind of stuff. A couple of wrinkles in there. All right, so, so far I'm kind of liking this idea. It seems kind of cool. I've already added a little bit of sway into her hips here by pushing this in a little bit and pushing this out a little bit. I mean, there's a little bit of like S curve to her to her pose here. Um, now I gotta decide on pants, pants or shorts or skirt. All this, you know, makes every change like this you make makes a difference. And, and of course, the character is still the character, whether you give her different clothes, but the clothes should match the character. You know, if she puts on a an outfit that doesn't match her. She should have enough defining qualities, like you know her lips and eyes and stuff. But the hairstyle is going to be a huge one. Um, when you're dealing with comics, if you make them bald, if you make all your characters bald, it might be difficult to distinguish what character is what character. Like if you were to have a scene where the, all your characters shave their heads and are naked, it might be di difficult to tell one character apart from the other unless you really give them like different body styles. Like one character is you know, more like small breasted and big hipped, like kind of like this here. Another one is uh, really, really big breasted and maybe small butt, small hips. 
Maybe another one has hourglass figure. Maybe another one's more chunky. If you give them different body styles, you might be able to tell them apart or, or really make their face characteristics very distinguished. Well, one has like a very, very thin lips or hardly no lips at all. Uh, another one has very big eyes, you know, things like that. But you got to keep that in mind that you kind of want your characters to read even if they were to have on a different outfit. So if they change their outfit, you know, the, out, the outfit should still fit the character, but even if they were to like, have a scene where the character is out of character on purpose, they're being silly or something, they put on some silly outfit or something um, for whatever reason that the scene tells, that the story tells for, or the story calls for, you should still be able to tell that character. So these are things you want to think about as you're designing a character. Uh, landmarks, basically. So her hair is a big landmark. If I were to have a, a moment where she would shave her head in the story, I have another landmark here that would, you know, tell who she is. But yeah, anyway, and then overall I try to add those, you know, those landmarks into my characters anyway. Okay, so I'm, I'm talking and at the same time I'm talking, I'm thinking, you know, what kind of fits her character? What kind of fits her weirdness? And I'm almost thinking maybe the shirt gets really tight in here. And the reason why it gets really tight in here, when it gets big again, is because she wears like leather bands or something. You know, I come across here and I come back around. And I gotta think think about the leather bands. You know, they, they're coming across and they're coming back around. You know, they're going around the arm. They're not just flat. Maybe they crisscross. Come around there. Comes around. And that looks too much like an X. I don't really like it. So I should say zoomed out more too when I'm doing this. Maybe I'll make a thin, kind of a thin strap here. Maybe she has a one that's kind of going straight across, wraps around. Maybe another one that kind of come, comes, not straight across, but at a slight angle to that one. It's also thin, something like that. I'm thinking I like the thinness all together. So let's make more like rope or twine or something going around. And then the shirt's going to bulge out you know, a little bit uh, after each one of these because they're tied kind of tight around her arm. And I think that could add let's kind of change it up a little bit. Again, this is all sketchy still, so I'm not adding all the details. I'm trying to keep it sketchy, but the idea is there. I kind of like that. I'm almost thinking maybe the neck can kind of be the same. Instead of maybe the neck is more tank toppy, comes down more like this, attaches here. This is just a. Um, that's just a seam. Make it move the seams more right here. Maybe the shirt has these. I'm thinking this part will be more symmetrical. Straps that come across like that and come around her neck. That, that continues to go around the back side, I imagine. It's continuing going around the back side of her neck like that, like a collar kind of and wraps on the other side. Attaches there and there on the shirt. Maybe you have, there's two more that attach here and here. Something like that. Let's have a middle line here. Let's make this a little more symmetrical. So we'll have that one attached like that. Come straight across. Use the you can use the shift key to go make a straight across. And make sure you make a straight across horizontal line there. And then we'll go down here and down here like that. Make those two straps. You know, it could make it even more revealing and really have this come down even farther if you wanted to. And show some of her breasts and have more straps. 
you know, that would be cooler for a big breasted character. And I could turn her to a big breasted character, that would be easy change. Right, so I'm just trying to share all my thought processes and how I design a character. I'm hoping that me doing this will help you design your characters better and easier. You know, it's not something that just has to be like fully formed in your brain. You have an idea in your brain. Hey, she's a spunky, weird character. That's the idea you have in your brain. You have to make that come to life, and it's not just necessarily going to come to life with one one just drawing from the top of your head. You know, you're gonna if you're anything like me, you're going to take you're going to sketch a lot, and you're going to erase, and you're going to rethink, and you're going to use different layers, and go, you know what, I'm not sure if I like that shirt, um, maybe redesign it a little bit, like I did here, and things like that. As I continue to design the character, you know, another thing I might want to think up first, or while I'm doing it, there's no set way to do this, right? Sometimes I think of backstory first, sometimes I think of it along the way. In this case, I'm thinking of backstory along the way. So I started thinking about, it's really cool if the way the character dresses or certain little signatures and stuff like that have a backstory. Why does she have three stars? It's, you know, Does that have some sort of backstory? And if that has some sort of backstory, it makes the character that much more interesting. It's not just an arbitrary design that's on here to make her look weird. It's like, hey, there's a backstory to it, you know. Um, she had three abortions, and each star stands for, in her beliefs, the aborted babies become like stars in the sky, which she kind of sees as angels or something, you know, or representations of of those angels, something like that. I mean, um, it could be something else, you know, it could be that um, the three stars stand for, you know, three significant things in her life that, that she's accomplished, you know, it can, you know, it could be the three most important people to her. It could be her children, it could be her mom, dad, and brother, you know, anything like that. But if it has some sort of backstory, it's cool. And of course, at some point, you bring that out in the story and you share it. Where someone goes, hey, why did you get that tattoo or something? And she kind of explains it briefly. Or she kind of explains it without explaining it. By like, you know, ah, leave me alone type of thing. But she kind of hints at what it means or whatever. Then you kind of figure it out by the little hints. Things like that. Um, interesting ways to, to tell backstory. She might, you know, wear straps around her, her wrist. Or not her wrist. Around her uh, elbows area. You know, for a reason too. It might just not might not just be hey uh, this is a cool costume design. It might be she wears those constricting type straps for a reason. There's some backstory to it, like um, she likes being tied down in bed or something like that. You know, you don't you don't learn that till later until there's a scene where she's like strap me down. You know, You're like oh maybe that's why she wears those. It never actually explicit, explicitly explicitly states it in the story, but you you can intuitively figure it out. Things like that. Um, I have several ideas for the bottom part of the figure. I'm thinking a skirt would be kind of cool. Um, skirt, maybe tight shorts underneath. There's all kinds of things I can do. Uh, maybe shorts. I'm trying to think. Um, I also might even want uh, there to be some like bracelets down here, and maybe these bracelets. They wrap around. You know, they got beads on them. Maybe there's a couple of them different colors and they kind of make it tight again and then this cloth right here kind of folds out like this and it has like seams these are all little design choices you can make as you're going along and decide to change if you don't like the overall look of something you know, so that's something else I can do there um, let's see here. I'm thinking skirt, so I'm thinking a low rider skirt. She can have like a, a low rider skirt here. And along with the low rider skirt, you know, you might maybe she has these kind of panties where you can kind of see part of the straps. And this kind of, you, you know, synchronicity. And you, know, you imagine maybe the panties start right about here. That way I can say, okay, yeah, they're not visible. The skirt covers that part. And these straps continue. And, they, you know, imagine this goes and it wraps around the body over here so you kind of want to imagine that wrapped around the body anyway this go this is like a there's a motif here right with the synchronicity of the straps everywhere showing straps neck strap here strap here showing it it you know it fits that motif there's there's some continuity throughout the design and I'm looking for that continuity here get him to wrap this around uh, one thing I think is kind of weird is cool belts. So I'm thinking she might have a really big cool belt uh, that she likes to wear, or maybe 
So this is going to be the belt area. Or maybe she's like, you know, she likes to wear her belt like this, you know, where it kind of comes down and kind of straps down like this around the leg. So it's like loose. Notice, you know, all these little things I'm, I'm designing, I'm thinking about on the fly. And that's something you can do. Yeah, and then maybe her skirt as well can have a slant like that. Where it comes up like that, you know, the skirt has a slanted design to it. It kind of matches the belt. Again, you have synchronicity, continuity between the design aspects that you're going for. You can see where the, the skirt could, you know, could fit a normal belt, but she chooses not to have it do that. Now that's kind of cool. Um, there's many other things we can do with the skirt. We can make the skirt more you know, normal, like that. We can add, you know, a layer of fluff to the bottom of it. We could uh, make it, you know, all kind of jagged and cut off, like cut off jean type material. It could be leather, but in this case, if you have all the little white strings, you know, it could be cut off jean material, and that looks kind of cool. There's so many things we can do with that. Um, let me think, what else can we do with it? We can... You can make it one of those kind of um, more typical Harajuku style skirt. So it's kind of like the schoolgirl, like Catholic schoolgirl outfit uniform. And that's where... This wouldn't be the same up here. I think it actually is... They're usually the... There's a kind of a more of a uh, spandecky material, which probably comes right about here. This is all kind of more spanicky. It's probably going to be pleated, uh, or not pleated, but um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a flannel type design. And then you're going to have, starting from each one of these, you'll have these kind of things coming here. All right, so you have the part of the skirt coming out like that. You know, that kind of design there. kind of have the in and out thing going on you know she's wearing that kind of skirt but definitely if you're gonna have that kind of skirt you're probably not gonna want to you know do any kind of flannel type design because this is gonna take way too long and this is like a cover you know of like a one-time drawing like an illustration you might then you can get that detail but if it's gonna be a, a comic book character something you're gonna be drawing over and over and over again frame after frame uh, it's probably not a wise idea to go with pleated or not pleated but I think the pleated part is the part that comes down but anyway that kind of skirt where you have the flannel design obviously the reason why is because if you do that you're gonna have to be drawing that every single time that can just get crazy you know she so can also be wearing pants and maybe the pants are like tight jean pants and they kinda of come down here and then again she has this you know leather strap motif and there's some story behind it you know like I said she likes to be tied up whatever the story is that gets you know thin around here and then comes around her calf maybe they come down like this kind of style or maybe they continue like that um, she could just wear straps around her legs in general without the pants but I'm like an idea of a skirt so let's go with that I don't know if I like that style of a skirt or not still debating it it's kind of cool I'm thinking that style that could work I think that could work it's different it's weird Nothing wrong with being different. Going just get out of the ordinary, get out of the safe zone, you know, what you're used to drawing, what you're used to seeing. No reason with being different. Nothing wrong with it. Maybe this belt, um, what kind of belt is it? Maybe the 
belt buckle starts over here somewhere. Maybe it's like one of those kind of belt buckles that are like just metal. I'm trying to think if the belt has any, uh, maybe there's no holes, you know, so it's more of like a military like belt. Maybe her father was in the military and so she uh, inherited his belt and so she wears it all the time and maybe it has his initials on it. And uh you know her her last name is is uh Marcello or something like that. <laughs> I don't know if that really fits her, but you know, her last name is some with an M. Maybe a Japanese name. Maybe her dad. Her mother was Jap Japanese and I don't know. Yeah, father has to be American, so American last name, Martin or something. And uh maybe her first name is kinda of more Japanese. But anyway, um the whole point is that you know her last name and then you see you know her first name is not doesn't start with an L. Let's say her first name is like Sherry or something. And then you know her last name is Martin, and so you're like, hmm, that belt's not hers. Uh you can tell by initial there's an M on it, so it's most likely. And then she talks about how her grandfather was in the military, and you see it's a military belt, and you connect the two. You connect the dots. You're like, I like doing that in storytelling where the, the reader has to kind of connect the dots. But anyway, so. Don't forget the muscles. You know, on each side of the leg, you have this muscle kind of comes around here, the serratus muscle. It kind of comes all the way around about here. So you kind of add that into the anatomy of the leg structure. That one goes farther down, which is why the calf starts farther down the inside. Kneecap, you know, it's small, it starts on the inside here. And that, that part of the leg starts higher because that muscle starts higher on that side. All stuff you learn in my anatomy course. Stuff you don't really learn in my Mastering and Figure course. Mastering and Figure course is more of a basic course. It's also a much shorter course. It's like a figure starter course more than is a complete knowledge of the human body course where you can just totally master the human figure like you never could before. Yeah, you know, probably could have put our legs together or something. Um, I kind of, you know, started this kind of S curve here, pushed the weight on this leg some. You know, so I could have added. Uh, I still can actually. Maybe just add a little bit of spunk here to her. Still. That's a little too far over. We're still going to have a front view of this leg, but it's going to be more turned in. We'll still have that same muscle there. Calf. Kneecap. So that's one leg there. That's the leg. The leg, it's kind of stepping forward. It's kind of pushing the weight up this way. That's just pushing the weight up that way onto that hip. This leg can kind of come behind. Draw kind of through the character. Sometimes you just draw opposite seeds like that. You know, let's go ahead and do that in a, another color so you can see it. Boom. There and there. I don't know. It's just doing black. I want to really show opposite seeds here. Let's do a bigger, bigger brush. 
like that and just kind of see the opposite seeds if you're doing the gesture drawing. I can't remember what color I was using, doesn't really matter. I'm going to have to redesign the, or redraw the skirt now. I'm drawing through the character though. See the leg. Shin bone comes in there. This foot is further behind. Definitely chose a different color, didn't I? It's, it almost seems like it's all drawn a lot darker than it was before. Let's make this foot bigger because it comes in front. Right, so you have one leg kind of come in front of the other. When that happens, the knee is actually a little bit higher. Knee starts up higher like that, and that'd be the something like that. Doesn't matter a lot; that's gonna be covered up anyway. Now I gotta redesign the belt and everything to go around the leg now. So the skirt. Belt. Oh, I'm using a size 5 brush, that's why. Forgot to switch it back to size 3. I was like, why is it fucking drawn so damn big? It's so dark. That leg is kind of turned a little bit. You, know, to this, you see kind of a side view of the leg, so the knee is kind of or out like this. Alright, so now I gotta decide, you know, what's the rest of her body gonna be? What what is she gonna be wearing down here? And I'm I already started thinking about, you know, the hair jugger type girls. I can do like a maybe she's wearing a regular socks. So the socks are like knee high socks or whatever, they come up to here. I can also make the socks really high and kind of sexy where they come up here. And then she has a secondary sock. She can have three socks. One sock here, one color. Another sock here, another color. Then the third sock here, which is not really a sock, it's more like a leg warmer. And it comes down, it's kind of more baggy, comes down on top of the shoe, covers part of the shoe, you know, like the Harajuku girls wear like that. You also have the double one um, or triple. It's all kind of weird looks you can use. You can just have one long sock here, then the sock here that's maybe striped. You can just go with the leg warmer all together. You, know, you can just skip all the long socks and just go with the leg warmer, which would fit over the lower part of the leg here. You can also have the leg warmer start up way up here. You know, it wraps around and it's big and it's fluffy. You know, it kind of comes down. You can also even make it like a big fluffy fur ball as well if you wanted to. You know, it's kind of baggy, it comes down, wraps around the shoe. As you can see, comes up like that. So now you have this big leg warmer look here. And that's kind of cool. That's kind of sexy. And then you can have uh, again another colored sock underneath there. So all different kinds of things you can do. This sock is just a colored sock. You know, colors is a, is a thing you decide on last. I usually do at least. What colors fit this person? I'm thinking darker colors. And then you decide, hey, is this is this a striped kind of material here? If so, you can add the stripes into it. Maybe not that much. Maybe even. And you know, this is where it gets complicated too, because you have to think, do you really want to draw stripes every single time you draw this character? Or should, you know, just use a solid color, because solid color is easier to draw. And this right here takes a lot longer to draw every single time. Also takes a lot, a lot longer to ink. And color each time, then you have to think about the wrinkles, and how it affects the uh, stripes, things like that. So that's something to consider. 
kind of liking that idea. It's got some attitude behind it. And weirdness, and it fits your character, I think. The character I'm trying to develop here. And she can still have stripes, you know. Um, she can wear, around her knees, she can still wear leather straps. Thin leather straps or ropes, you know. Just depends on what I decide I think fits the character. Like that. So she wears that over her sock. And this leg warmer, you know, it can be a lot, you know, it can be boom, it can be like one of these poofy ones, you know, like the the ones that go go girls wear. More of a go go dancer type style, all one solid color. Maybe that fits the character more. You know, it's all what I decide. And every little thing that you decide with your character is gonna change what kind of character you have you have developed. When I take this character here, if this is the kind of style I decide to go with, this kind of tall, kind of modelistic look, uh, kind of uh, the, it reminds you of um, fashion model design, you know, fashion design type type drawings. Uh, this would be, you know, interesting, very interesting look. But uh, yeah, I know her hands, you know, start way up here, so you might only see you know, her thumbs sticking out here. Maybe you know, just like her knuckles here. And her hands, and you can decide what her hands are doing. Maybe, you know, obviously, they'll be more relaxed. And maybe these fingers are somewhat going straight. And I kind of, you know, usually draw the hands like that, very simplistically at first. I might even make that cover more of the hand. Hand kind of fits in there. Might make the sleeves longer; they don't cover like most of her hand. Where just sort of the fingertips stick out, that might look kind of more cute. Okay, so leg behind appears to be higher than the leg in front. Again, you might add a couple straps. It's more of a side view. And then... It's covering most of the shoe. I'm just going to kind of shade that all in the background as one solid color as if it's like in shadow or something I'm not going to worry about details about anything last but not least I need to design shoes and see I won't need that you know, under drawing anymore once I get this down to how I want it that's some kind of color, not sure what color yet maybe she wears some jewelry here of some sort whether it be a, just a rope or beads or whatever maybe a leather strap offset that leg a little bit also adds to the roundness of the leg it shows the form of the leg with this line the dark stripe I think on these should be on the very top that way the top's nice and dark the black stripe or dark purple whatever color I decide to go with Right, so shoes. I'm thinking just basic, uh, kind of gothic um, boots. You know, the typical Harajuku style boots here. Except I might give it, you know, the big, more military-like boot because her, her father was in the military, so it would give it some some cool design like that. as I give it some more clod humping boot stomping kind of look to it and that's pretty much it now that that stage there I, I have pretty much flushed out the character decided that I like I like all the, the look of it like how everything looks and then from that I can redraw her over here as more of the kind of style I want her to be in if I say I don't want this kind of fashion model style I can draw in this style over here uh, but still have all the same you know characteristics and everything 
if I was working with pencil, maybe a blue pencil, I'd take my kneaded eraser and kind of erase it just a little bit so I can see, but not see it too well. And then I'll come back and I'd use now, I'd use a, a regular pencil and draw over that pencil. And at this stage here, I need to be able to see this. So one way I can do this is I can make another copy of this of this image. I can also go to Windows. I've got to make another copy of it, but I think you open document, new document. You can make a new document. Let me see what that does. No. Anyway, there's a way to copy your document. I just can't remember how to do it right now. I teach it actually on my Photoshop course how to make a new, uh, make a copy of this document. I just can't remember how to do it. But another thing you can do besides make a copy of the document is just go to Windows and then go to um, Navigator. And right now I have this Navigator on my other monitor. Bam! I put it on the monitor and I can zoom in. But that, you know, this zooms in over here, but I can see that I can see the navigator and the monitor. It's also it's better though if you have I think a, just a copy of the window. It looks better that way than but the navigator works too. What's cool about the navigator is you can also zoom in um, from, from the navigator here. But yeah, so the navigator stays the same. You can kind of see everything, but only the, the downfall is you can't zoom in on the navigator. So it's better to make a copy of the actual layer itself. An easy way to do that, if you can't remember, since like I can't remember how to do it, is I can go, okay, um, I can flatten all this, for example. I can unflatten in a second. I can click OK. Then I can go um, select all. Then I can copy. Then I can go to new. Go OK. Edit paste. Take this layer and pop it into my other screen. Now I can, on that layer, I can zoom in. That way I can see things like her face, for example, for right now. So I have it zoomed in so I can see her face over there. Come back to this document. Let's uh, erase a couple of layers, steps back so that way it's everything is intact here. I might want to, you know, file and save this if I don't lose all the information that I've been working hard at. All right, so I did that. It saved it as a Photoshop file, and I just labeled it Character Design. I'm going to go and use black now. I come in here, and I'm like, okay, so... You know, again, I'm not using, like, a strong pin here. Like, a, um, I'm still using a sketch pencil. The reason why is because I'm not, I'm not going in yet and doing a... ink drawing yet because I'm still redesigning it now with more of a doll head shape in mind so I, because I'm redesigning the character a little bit I decided to this will give it a younger look as well kind of just think about the size of the eyes, where I want them, the nose, mouth. Okay, I'm going to slant the eyes up a little bit more oval like this. Kind of like that look. So I'm going to slightly redesign the character again with a different style in mind, but it's still going to carry the concept of the character through. Kind of want it more. More mean. And so you can, you'll, you'll see then my character will go through another change.
And that change is mainly due to style, the style choice. I decided to fit it into an entire different style of body from more of a fashion design style to something more modern Disney, you know. I'm going to do something cool with their eyes here. I'm going to kind of make them look off over here instead of directly at us. I can actually, this is easier if you just kind of draw it dark and then have the dark part over there. And then you have white and there's a slight glare on the dark side and on the light side. There's a lighter glare. I like this kind of style where it comes thin, thick here, the eyebrow that comes down to this little point. Add some makeup to her and I you know shadow in general because there would be shadow there. Not eye shadow but natural shadow. I want more of a button nose. So I've kind of changed the style of the nose altogether. The lips I think I'll keep pretty much the same. That is you'll have these tall, thinner part of the lips here. And it's going to come down to this cute little smile. I'm going to really exaggerate the sides here. Almost like a doll or clown or jester or something. I kind of, I kind of like that look I had going. Then we'll have a thinner bottom, slightly off-centered bottom lip here. So, I mean, it's it's keeping the style and it's translating over, you know. But it's also changing a lot in the process. Because I'm adding this whole new style to it. So, you know, it's, I'm doing this to show you just how much change style makes. When you add a whole new style to a character design, it's like, dang, that really freaking changes the character a lot. Now, I'm really exaggerating the character more now, really pushing the envelope more. Again, it's still sketch-like because I, I want, there might still I want, I want opposite, so I want it this side over here. I want it totally mirrored. I want I want some asymmetry here, but I want there to be harmonization with the way. I don't, I don't, I don't want I don't want both loops going to the left. It, it would look weird. So I'm having both loops going to the right. Again, still very quick sketching. Don't know if I like that. I think I want to keep the original look of hardness. It's very small chin here. Let's come up at an angle more. So there, we can still keep the uh, some hard lines to hair is kind of interesting too. The original kind of character design there. Okay, so that's cool. She still looks, the, you know, she still fits the part. She's still like the same character. I'm going to go with a really thin neck here. Then we'll come down to the small body. And uh, let's go ahead and add the straps. First we'll add, come down more of an angle. I like this better. One strap is going to be here. Wraps around the neck. So that one comes straight across. I like to keep this rather symmetrical. Again, this is just a sketch, so I'm not too worried about it being, you know, too accurate and everything. I want the idea there more than anything else. I you have a choke collar right here covering 
that part of the straps of the straps and it goes around the neck I like that I like the original V design here continuing the straps cool okay now then arms here beaded pearls come around here That's just done very quickly. Might show a little bit of the seam here. Seam over here. Oh, that's right. That's on another layer. But actually, no. I think that it works, so whatever. No, not like that, actually. It's kind of. Let's go more like this. really thin with the waist and a couple wrinkles up there to the top part of the breast So as you can see, it's still the same character, you know. I think this character would make a cool kind of witch character. Maybe, maybe her hair has like a witchy backstory. I don't know. Maybe her hair kind of has a mind of its own sometimes. and has like, it's like a cursed power. Sometimes it helps her, sometimes it, it you know, makes things harder for her acts on its own like with its own mind it's like it's like cursed sometimes it decides to like ruin her dates or something you know slaps her boyfriend's drink over on top of him other times she can control it a little bit and sometimes it sometimes it helps her you know and gets you out of trouble 
Maybe she's drowning and her hair is wet. She's knocked out and she's like in a puddle of water and she's like drowning. And it's her hair that actually saves her. Pulls her out of the drowning water. That reminds me of uh, Vampire Hunter D for some reason. That little thing in his hand saves him. Eating the dirt. Brings him back. Never understood how eating the dirt, I guess it's because, you know, the vampire lore, they bury themselves in dirt to rejuvenate. So anyway, if you haven't seen Vampire Hunter D, the, Vampire Hunter D, the anime, then you don't really know what I'm talking about, but if you have, then you understand what I'm saying. Sometimes I kind of just draw that kind of shape there with the legs. Bring it down here. Alright, and so from here, just to have the skirt, just to have the belt here. Belt's gonna come down, wrap around over there. Like that. See, now I can really exaggerate the belt. I can make it big, super big. You can see I'm just transferring the character over here to this new style. But you can see the character is reading well and she's transferring well. I gotta click on this other layer here for a second and scroll it up so I can see the design details I added over here because I can't remember everything I designed. Alright, she has the skirt coming down like here, comes around. Wraps on each side of the leg. It's a tight fitting skirt. First leg comes down kind of in front of her here. She has the leg warmer socks going around. Top part is going to be a uh, like I've done before. The top part is black stripe. Lost my train of thought there for a second. Well, that's because my sleeping pills are kicking in. Anyway. After what I'm sketching, you know, I just kind of hint at the rest. No reason to carry it out because there might be other changes. I might decide to get rid of the stripes altogether, you know. So, I like that gap in this pose between the legs there. That's the colored high sock.
just gonna kind of hint at that leg back there. Get some of the shadows in the background. Right, so you have it. Same character design, but uh, you can see how much she changes a little bit when I add her to a, a new style. But you can tell it's kind of still the same character, but I really like that style. I really like that character. Um, she's really spunky and cute. I don't know. I like it. I think she came out really cool. I hope you guys liked it too. Hopefully this doesn't help you when, you know, as I, as I shared my creative process and, you know, how I go about designing a character and you can see how I, you know, I had to raise some stuff and I, you know, I might even, sometimes it might take me, I, I did this quite easily. Um, it might take me a while sometimes to really develop a character. I might, I might find myself really redesigning aspects many times, you know, redoing the skirt five to ten times before I'm like happy with it or go from skirt to shorts to pants to different kinds of pants and before I finally settle on something that you know fits the character. But I like that. Um, I think I decided to take out the bands on her knees. Um, I think she looks better without it and I have to, do I really want to draw those extra bands every single time in the frame you know when I'm drawing her in a comic book. And things like that you know you have to keep in mind too when, when it's a comic book character versus if, it, if she is a uh, just a single time character, you know, where she's only going to appear on the cover of a book or something. Single illustration or something like that. I think I'm going to, I don't know, I'm rethinking this whole skirt idea. I'm thinking maybe, maybe the skirt is uh, just right here and it comes straight across. The reason why I'm rethinking the skirt. I think it might look sexier to show more of that uh, look. A lot of little changes I might make here and there. So yeah, anyway, I like it. I, I really like this character. I like how um, it's a it's a really big demonstration of taking the principles I teach about style, you know, minimizing exaggeration and distortion, and how you can take the same character and bam, minimize, maximize, distort, stretch, you know, whatever words you want to use. That the main things you're doing is you're either minimizing you're distorting or your um, damn it brain it's falling asleep on me minimizing distorting or exaggerating so and you get some cool character like this uh, I really like the end result that I mean she can really become a comic character I might actually use her in a story sometime where she becomes her own little character maybe do like a, a couple little comic skits or something like that and put them on YouTube I don't know we'll see what happens with that I, I really like her I think she's cool I might feel like come up with some already already started developing a backstory for her and stuff and so you know little little stories uh, where I can be like a little mini series story story that's told in little parts little sections or something anyway yeah I think I like that much 
cuter, smaller character design than the more realistic uh, fashion model type design. She just pops out. The whole weirdness and stuff just really pops out. Either way, though, I think she's a cool character. Anyway, I, I kind of went so many different ways with this character. You know, the type of clothing I gave her, the type of body I gave her, all that kind of changed. Like I said, hopefully this helps you figure out uh, how to design your characters better, whether they be male characters or not. It's uh, when you, you know, how big of shoulders you decide to give him. You decide to give him this uh, big physique where he has more uh, boom, where he's more like big neck, big man, little head, you know, big shoulder, you know, shape here, arms, come down, forearms, muscles, forearms, chest. You know, he has this kind of big V style to him, and then he's got like little legs. It's like, hey, I got little legs. And they get really small. And then he's got feet. And he's kind of like a. You know, some character like that. And uh, he's got big fist. It's kind of more of a gorilla kind of body, you know. However, you decide to come up with the character and what to, what to add, what not to add, uh, you know, how how where you decide to have a backstory first and design it based on that, or you don't really have much of an idea in mind, you start with, start off with a generic face, as I did with this character, and start plugging in features that you like, certain types of eyes, certain types of lips, certain types of nose. You're like, oh, you know what? Those eyes kind of don't match that nose. I'm going to give it, or don't match those lips. So I'm going to give it different lips. So I'm going to give it different eyes. And you keep mix matching the things and changing them until you come up with a face that you like and it has a certain character to it. And you're like, hey, you know what? If I kind of added this kind of hair, hey, that's really cool. And then the character really starts coming together. And then you start to kind of develop your backstory. You know, the, the way I did it is just one way to do it. There's many ways to do it. You can write the background of the character first and design the character all in writing first. What kind of character she is, what kind of personality she has, whether she's introvert or extrovert with her personality, whether she's aggressive or passive aggressive or peaceful and uh, pacifist and all this kind of stuff, um, whether she's a pacifist, but ha you know, here's a really funny thing. She's a pacifist, but she has, you know, she takes anger management classes because she has anger issues. So she's a total pacifist. It's all like, oh, look at a little spider. Let's don't kill it. Let's take it outside. And she lets it go in nature and stuff. And hey, let's not walk on the grass because the grass is a living thing. Let's walk on sidewalks. And so she's like this really, you know, all green character. Don't, you know, don't use, try to ride a bike as much as you can instead of use your car. And, uh, you know, really passive kind of person. Uh, let's don't, don't get in fights and stuff. But then she has like a really bad anger issue, which contradicts her passiveness. Her passiveness is her beliefs and anger problem is some deep stemming thing from her past that she has to overcome. And so, you know, she comes out and just like, oh, gets really mad out of nowhere, almost like a bipolar because those two, her belief system makes her a very passive person and she doesn't want to fight or nothing like that. Doesn't want to hurt animals or nothing, not even insects. But then her, her aggression inside her built up anger and stuff from her past makes her this like slow or, or very quick tempered person and she takes anger management classes and that kind of contradiction is really fun with a character and actually it might fit this kind of character really well actually I make her because she's already so weird and spunky and I think that you know concept but anyway you can design a concept like that and then just decide what how would that character look and try to figure out how that character look as you start designing it Anyway, I know I'm kind of rambling here, but uh, I think all that talk at the end helps. You know, it's part of, it's like that big part of the art book that you don't ever want to read. The you know, few pages with no drawings, but you should read them because they often have great insight. And you know, this rambling at the end actually, I I think has some great insight into character design. Character design is uh, something that everyone can do. You could be a great, fantastic artist, but not be a good character designer. But if you're a good character designer, you know. And you're an okay artist, you know, you could draw pretty good. You can actually be a character designer for video games and, and all kinds of stuff. It's you know, it's an interesting it's an interesting part of art, you know, to be. It's an interesting position to hold, to be the character designer. You know, if you're obviously a fantastic artist and a fantastic character designer, you have a much better chance of landing a job being a character designer. But I'm telling you, if you have fantastic character designing skills, but your drawing skills are, you know, like 
about mine. I'm not like the best artist in the world, but I'm pretty good. You can easily land a character designing job where that's your job is to design the characters for video games or you know uh, movies or you know comic books or whatever it is that they need you to design characters for. Use it for video games. Uh, but yeah, and then anim animated movies and stuff. Thank you for watching this lesson. I hope you enjoyed your exclusive lesson. And I'm going to try to bring them to you as often as possible. The reason why I don't bring them to you once a week is if I bring, brought them to you once a week, I'd be stuck giving you like 15 minute little lessons and there's not much you can cover. So it'd kind of be like part one, part two, part three. And I figured might as well just come out with it, you know, once every two weeks, three weeks, a month, however long it takes. And then bam, hit, hit you with an hour and a half full lesson, you know, that you could really learn from. Let me know what it is you would like to see in the next exclusive lesson. Your guys' input really helps, and I like to know what you guys like to see. So leave a comment to this video. Uh, it, it's a you know it's a private video just for you guys. So you know not not you know just other private members or other exclusive members are going to see your comments, and so you don't have to feel embarrassed about about putting them up there. Really. Um, anyway, so go ahead and leave your comments. Don't feel embarrassed about it, and say hey, this is what I'd like to see next in the next exclusive video, and maybe it'll come up. Another thing I'd really like you to do is if you did find this helpful, I give you permission to share it. Um, I know it's a private exclusive lesson, but I do give you permission to share it with other people. Like, So you can click that share button and share it on your Facebook or on your Twitter or share it on your Google+, whatever. That way other people can learn from it. Because you know, that's what this is all about, people. This is all about helping others learn. It's not about um, being stingy. It's not about making money. It's really about passing knowledge down and helping other artists learn and land their dream job because it's fun. It's fun to be able to draw for a living. And I want to help as many people as I can. And the best way to do that is hit that share button and sharing it with people on your Facebook and stuff. That way more people can benefit from it.